name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at how to create a table. One of the first things that you need to do in order to create a form and interact with data is to create a table. And I know this seems like a pretty basic thing, but there's actually a lot of nodes and a lot of properties on the table that are really helpful if we set correctly. Um, so let's dive in and take a look. Um, this screen is kind of showing us where we're going to go. We're going to create a car table with a few fields, a field group, an index, and set some properties along the way. Um, so let's get started. First, if you're kind of new, you can work in your development box and uh, create a new project. So select File, New Project. And let's create a new Dynamics 365 Finance Operations Project. So I'll just go ahead and call this tutorial car and then I'm going to say create directory for solution and then you don't need to actually add to source control unless you've got that set up. So I'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to create a new solution and project for us. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is right click on the project and select properties and make sure that the code that you're adding is in the model that you want. Um, so if you have a custom model, uh, go ahead and specify that. This might default to um, fleet management, and that may not be the model where you want to actually add this code. The second thing that you want to make sure you change is this synchronized database on build. So when we're working with tables or extended data types, um, we need to set this to true so that when we actually compile our solution, um, it's actually uh, making the our tables, making sure our tables get created in the SQL database um, and all the rest. Otherwise, they'll just be in Visual Studio and won't actually get synchronized to the database. So definitely make sure this is set to true. By default, it's usually set to false uh, to save on kind of the build time. So we'll click OK. The next thing we want to do is create our table. To create a table, you can right click on the project, select Add, New Item. And then under D365 Items, you can find the node uh, labeled Table. And we can call this, let's just call it, um, we could call it Tutorial Car, or maybe let's just call it Car. Click Add, and it'll go ahead and add our table to our project. In this case, it's taken a few seconds. Um, then after this gets added, we're going to need to add fields to our table. Um, whenever we're adding fields to our table, a question that you want to ask yourself is, should I be creating an extended data type um, for my table? Extended data types can be found um, up here under extended data types. The point of an extended data type is to add properties um, to a type such as a string, a date, an integer, or a real, one of the base types. Um, but we can add properties to that type that can then be shared by one or many fields in our system. Um, so for instance, item ID is an extended data type it's also a field on the invent table. It's a very common extended data type. Well, this extended data type has a label. It has, um, in this case, it doesn't have an help dex, um, but it can also have a string size. And so the power of using a, an extended data type is if you need to change the label um, or the length of the string, you can just do that in one place on the extended data type and then all of the tables that use um, that extended data type will be changed as well. The label is what shows on the form um, for that field um, and then the string length allows you to store more information. So item ID is a very common one. Sales ID is another really common one that if you needed to change the label and, and make it something different because you want it to be something different, you could change that at that level. Um, so how do we know if we need an extended data type for our field? Usually if you're creating a un new unique identifier that's for your table, you should create an extended data type. If you're reusing um, or creating a field uh, for data that also exists on another table, you should use the extended data type from 
that table. So for instance, if we needed item ID on this table, we should we know that already exists in the system under invent table item ID. We should then go look at that field, see what extended data type that uses and use the same thing. That helps us with lookups and, and a whole bunch of other things later. Um, make sure we're it makes sure we're all in sync there. Um, if it's a generic field, just like a description field, um, then you could use an existing base uh, extended data type or you could create a new one. So in this case, we're gonna do a little bit of both. I wanna create two new fields. I wanna create a car ID, which is gonna be our unique identifier, and a description field. So to start, rather than uh, creating that new car ID field directly here, I'm actually gonna create the extended data type first and then drag it to create the field. So let's go ahead and do that just because that's a really efficient work uh, flow. So we can right click on our project, select add new item. And then we can find the extended data types here. In our case, both our fields, we want to be a string. So I'm going to call it car ID, click add. And then that'll go ahead and create that extended data type and add it to our project. On this extended data type, I can now set um, some uh, properties. So the label that I want it to show on, when it shows on a form or anywhere else, I can paste it into here. Um, I can go ahead and set a help text as well. So let's see if it'll let me here. Sometimes, yeah, you just have to click on the, the node again. Car ID, I could set a help text of um, car unique identifier. Um, and then I could change the string size and make it 20 if I wanted to. Great. I can save that. And now I can actually go back to our car node with our fields and actually drag this extended data type to the fields node. The power of this is it's going to create the field of the right type. It's a string type. Um, but it's also going to set the extended data type um, property to car ID for me. So it just kind of saves a step. I could have right clicked, said new string, um, named my field, and then set this property. It just saves me a few steps doing it this way. So then let's create a description node. So I'm going to right click on fields and say new string and call this one description and then set the extended data type to the existing um, extended data type called description. When I do that, I inherit kind of the label as well as you'll notice um, the string size of, the, of this now changes to 60 um, from whatever the default is. So great, I now have a field or two fields on my table that I wanna use. Um, next, let's look at these field groups there's several different types of field groups. The auto report field group is used um, by the system to generate some automated or automatic reports on the data that's in this table. So very often you might drag every single column you have into your auto report. If you've got fields that are um, ref rec ID uh, relations, um, and if you don't know what that means right now, that's totally fine. Those might not be human readable, and so you may not want to include those in your auto report. The next thing is this auto lookup. Um, this is useful for when you've got another form that is looking up a record and showing to the user a record um, from this table. Um, maybe you need to select what car ID uh, you need to use uh, on some other form. The, you'll get a drop down from that lookup, and this indicates what columns should we show. So you might have a whole lot of columns on your table. Um, you probably don't want to show them all in a wide form, but in this case, the car ID and description makes a lot of sense to add to an auto lookup. So I'll drag those in there as well. Um, next, we can create our own um, custom field group and that's a really good idea so the way we do that is we right click on the field group we say new field group and we can call it something like all or identification I'll go ahead and call it identification um, and then we can drag our two fields in there as well um, and then lastly 
uh, before I kind of explain what this is, I'm gonna actually make sure that this field group has a label. So I'm gonna just copy the name over to the label. And normally I would create full labels in a label file. That would be best practice, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll not do that. Um, the point of creating a custom field group is if I create a form, which is very common for this type of table, if I create a new form um, for this table and I add a grid to it, I can actually set the data group property on that gr uh, grid to be um, this field group, as long as I've set the data source property as well. I can then set the data group property to this and the grid will automatically create two controls for me, the car ID and description control. I don't have to do that by hand. So it kind of saves me some work if I've created this field group. And then later, if I have a requirement that I need to add um, some additional uh, fields on this table, maybe I need to add a price or a manufacturing price on this table, all I need to do is drag that into my field group and the form will kind of automatically be updated and that new control will be created. I don't have to do it in two different steps. So field groups are really great for allowing us to build out um, forms quickly. Okay, um, the next thing I wanna cover is indexes. Indexes are really useful for, for, for performance. Um, their main use is for helping uh, the speed of retrieving records, um, but a second use is also making sure um, that uh, we don't have duplicate records in our system. So in this case, I've got a car ID and description. Car ID is gonna be my unique um, field. I don't wanna have two records in this table with the exact same value as car ID. That would make it so I couldn't um, select a record from this table and only get one back. Um, so very, very common in tables, you're gonna have a unique identifier and, and a unique index. And the way of having that unique primary index um, is to add it here. So let's do that and then it'll make more sense. So if you right click on indexes and select new index, it'll create a new index. You can then drag the field or fields that you want to be part of that index in to it, so let's go ahead and do that. You could also have kind of right clicked and said new field, but it's much easier to drag and drop it. Now I'm gonna rename this index just for readability to be car IDX. That kind of gives users without even drilling into it an idea of what is part of this index. The last thing that I wanna look at is the properties. There is this allow duplicates property. By default, it's set to no. Um, we want to keep it set to no. That again for enforces the idea that no two records in this table can have the same car ID um, value. Uh, and that's really useful if a user tries to insert a record that already exists or the system does, it will throw an error and stop that process. So that's a really um, useful tool. All right, um, so we've added our fields, our field groups, our index. Let's go add a few more properties real quick. If I hit save on this and um, select our top node, there's a few properties on here that are really useful to set. If we scroll all the way to the top, there's a label. We can again call this car and then we can set title field one and title field two. These are fields that kind of affects the caption that you're gonna see on a form um, that has this table as its main data source. It can then show you if you've got different records selected in a grid, um, the car ID, um, and in this case, we'll set the second field as description. It can put that in the caption of the form, and that's useful in case you're maybe on other tabs that aren't showing the car ID and description as a control. You can still see that value in the caption. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that. The other thing we can set is this primary index. Uh, if I click the drop down, we now, because we made an index and the allow duplicates property is set to no, um, we have this option. If we had set allow duplicates set to yes, 
um, we wouldn't have been able to set this as the primary index. It still would have served an index to help with performance, um, but it wouldn't have been a unique index. And we need to, but this dropdown will only let us use unique index. Is. There are a few other nodes and properties that uh, we can talk about, though we won't go into detail in this tutorial. The relations node allows us to specify which fields on our table relate to other fields on other tables. It's a very powerful um, metadata that we can tell the system that allows it to do things automatically for us like lookups. So if we had added item ID as a field on this table, it wouldn't, wouldn't make any sense. But if we had it here, we could add a relation to the table invent table um, and set the item ID on this table related to item ID on that table. That can make it so that um, when we're on a form, the, uh, that shows this table. If we select the drop down, we can get a, a automatic look up to kind of the related table. Delete actions are really important as well. Um, they can be used when you've got uh, multiple tables uh, that have that have data that relate to each other. So, for instance, if you've got a sales order record in sales table and you've got sales line data in sales line, you can set up a delete action on sales table so that whenever a user say deletes the sales table record, it will also delete all of the sales line records associated to it. Those again rely on relations to work. Um, but they're really powerful. They make sure that uh, we're cleaning up our data and that we don't have um, records in tables that are orphaned in the system and that the user has no uh, user interface to actually be able to delete those records. Lastly, the last node that I kind of want to talk about is methods. Methods allow us to write X++ code um, that relate to tables. Uh, very common methods to override our init value that can be used if you want to set some default values anytime a record is created. Um, the insert method gets called every time a record is inserted. And so if you need to um, run some logic, like sum two fields together and store it in a third field, something like that, um, you can put that in the insert method, um, usually before the call to super, but you can also put code after the call. An update method is also very commonly used. Again, if you're updating a record, uh, you can run business logic. Another very common one is a method called modified field, and you can make it so whenever a field is modified on your table, that method uh, will get triggered and you can run your own logic. Um, but specifically, I think um, for this case, uh, it's kind of a best practice to add a find method um, to every table. A find method will have a select statement in it that can give you a unique single record on your table that you've just created given some parameters and the parameters would be the fields that are part of your unique index. So in this case we'd have a find method that would take car ID as a parameter and then we would return back um, the table buffer of this car table um, based on uh, that value that was in that car ID. Uh, I won't show the find method right here, but if you look on a lot of different tables, invent table included, you can see an example of a find method, but it's a very good idea to add that in. That way, uh, developers who are trying to use your table can just use that find method and they don't have to fully understand what um, unique fields are on your table. Um, I think that's about it. We'll go into more depth on some of these other things, but I thought it was really important to cover tables um, as a starting line. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.